Hi, this is Sally, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make marmalade. These were in the shop the other day, but I'm a little bit disappointed because there's really not much fruit segments compared to the amount of pith. Although I'm going to be using the pith, this is a little bit too much, so I'm going to add oranges. It wasn't a plan of mine, but I like messing with recipes and making up my own. The other thing I'm going to add to it is some ginger. I feel that adding spices and sometimes herbs to jams, marmalades, jellies, adds to the depth of the flavor. But that's just my personal opinion. So let's get on with it. I'm going to juice my lemons and any pith or pips I'm going to pop in the pot. I always boil them up separately. I'm going to just cut the rind like this. You could use a paring knife like I have or you can use a peeler doesn't really matter which way you go. When you've done that, cut all of the rind. For this marmalade, you need the orange and the lemon all cut up like this. It's up to you whether you do it fine or whether you do it chunky. It all cooks down and is quite edible. Now, if you don't want to have rind in yours, then just cook it all up and then scoop the rind out after half an hour of boiling. Not everybody likes rind in their marmalade. The other thing to do is to remove the pith like this. And I'm just gonna roughly chop it and then I'm gonna pop it into this saucepan. I'm using a cast iron pan. Only use a cast iron pan if it's got good enamel in it, otherwise the iron will leach into your jam and it will make the jam taste a bit weird. Otherwise you can use an aluminium, but you want a really thick base to it, otherwise you don't have good contact. This is actually a six and a half quart. Do not use anything smaller than that for my recipes because you will end up with quite a mess on your hands, especially if it's marmalade. In this pot, I've got four and a half pints and I'm just gonna put a half pint in this pot with all the pith and pips. In this pot, I'm going to put all of the sliced peel like that. I will just turn this one on while I'm peeling everything. By the time I've got my ingredients in here, it should be hot enough to start boiling. I've actually got three lemons to put in, so I need to go and find another one. As I go, I'm going to add anything left over from here into the little saucepan so it can all boil down like that. This only takes about 20 minutes, so that's nice and quick. The nice thing about jams and marmalades is you can stop halfway through and then start. Just remember to reheat and then take your time measurements from when it's reheated and doing what it's meant to be doing. This is after 15 minutes of boiling, so you can see it's all falling to pieces. I ended up not putting all of the pith in. I just regard that a little bit too much and I didn't want it altering the taste because pith can be quite acidic. And if I feel that it could have done with more, then next time I will use more of it. But it's not going to waste, it's going to the compost heap. So the garden will get the nutrients and stuff with my jam. Having allowed this to boil for about 20 minutes, I'm going to pour it in here. This is why I don't put it in a cloth, because that is really hot to touch. I can push it down and squeeze all of the good stuff out just drips in there. This is cooled down slightly because I was putting sugar in. You need to put in six pounds, which is I think two and a half kilograms. Ideally, it should be sugar designed for jam making, but I'm not quite sure where to buy that locally. So I use normal sugar. You can see the liquid has moved up because of the displacement. Now you don't want to have it as a vigorous boil because that's actually quite dangerous. It'll splash everywhere and you can get hurt. You don't want that. As it boils down, these pieces will break up even more, releasing more flavor into the marmalade. As I am stirring it, if there are any pips that accidentally got in here, I should be able to locate them and remove them. If they don't come out, it really doesn't matter. They'll have been boiled, so they're really quite soft. They just don't look very pretty. They tend to go a little bit of a dark color. As a kid, I used to hate finding the pips in there, so I will see if I need to remove anything. I can hear it, it's starting to come to the boil. While I'm waiting for that to do so, I'm going to grate ginger in. Don't put ginger powder in, it will just rise to the top. 
and it does nothing. I will put six ounces of ginger in and that will give it a little bit more depth to the flavour. Powders in jams just don't work. Believe me, I tried it. It was the worst thing that I could have done. You could dice this very small if you prefer. That works as well. You don't even need to take the outside off of ginger. It's just going to dissolve anyway. Once it comes back up to the boil, keep it moving and after an hour it should be ready to see what the setting is like. There is a little bit of scum but the scum hopefully won't get much worse than that. If I keep moving it then it will dissipate rather than collect. It took me a little while to discover the actual time so the hour is just perfect. The last 10 to 15 minutes I'm going to give it a little bit of a vigorous boil just to finish it off and in the meantime this pot here I'm going to boil everything that's in there for five minutes so it's totally sterilized. I have washed all of the jars, lids and these gaskets in the dishwasher but I'm just very cautious about it so I always boil it just to make sure that everything is sterilized. I've just turned off the heat and I'm going to carry on stirring it until it's cooled down a little bit. There is a little bit of scum but I'll get that off shortly. Something I have noticed is not all of this broke down. This is the outer casing of the segments here. But I did try it and it, it's soft, it's just like the rind so it's edible. A learning curve, next time I won't put it in. I hadn't thought about it, orange segments break down a little bit better. I'm intrigued that the rind is almost translucent compared to the lemon. I have tasted it, it tastes nice. I don't want to be messing with it if it's too hot because I don't like burning myself. I always let my jams and marmalades cool down a little bit. I've found a couple of small pips in here, but nothing really to write home about, which is good. As it slows down and starts cooling, if there are any others in there, I'll be able to find them. I don't smell the ginger very much, I think I could have put a bit more in, but that's okay. That's also a learning curve, is to decide how much to put in these things. Turn that down to medium. And then, for the fun part, is to pull out all of this. I took out all the water, put it on its side so that the water can evaporate. Pop that that way up so that it has a chance to do the same thing. And then I'm going to get both of these out. These are my starters. Again, pop it on its side so that the water can evaporate. You don't want water in your jam, otherwise it will go mouldy. Put those out and then I'm going to put three more in so that I've got a new set to go with. Don't burn your fingers, that is easily done. Put all the lids and gaskets in for that set and let those boil for five minutes. Here I've got my scales. I'm going to put one jar on, still piping hot. So I've got all of this on here. I've got the scale set to ounces. This is still a bit hot for me. But I'm going to use this to start off with. And then I'm going to load this with the marmalade. Pop that down. Gosh, that is hot. That is very, very hot. Then I'm going to pour this in till it gets to 10 ounces. There's eight, nine. I think I'm going to have to assist there. 10 ounces. If anything's wet, just dry it with a kitchen towel, pop it on and then secure the collar. And you just carry on doing this until you've got all of your marmalade in the jam jars. They are hot. By the time I've done that, it is time to remove the next set out of the boiling water. This is slow process, I tell you. With each jam jar, always make sure it is down to zero because the jars do vary in weight. And I have this little trivet here because I don't want the heat from the jam jar affecting the scales. The last thing I do is steam the jars. I've just put some of the hot water in that was boiling the glasses. So it's already preheated and I will boil each set of five for five minutes just in case any bacteria that got in there and I had no clue. That's just me. Not everybody wants to do that. I was taught that by my mother so I will continue doing it myself. Thank you for joining me on this project. I'm really quite excited. I'm going to taste it. It's a lovely golden colour. Not as dark as some marmalades. Mm. The lemon and the orange are very, are very subtle in here. The paloma is meant to taste a little bit like grapefruit. 
and that grapefruit flavor is coming through. I think I could have put a little bit more ginger in there because it's not one of the notes that I can taste, but it's really yummy. I'm going to enjoy that on some toast. I made the equivalent of 16 10 ounce jars. They're filled right up to the top each one, so I'm really pleased with the yield. I'm sorry, I can still, mm. It's making me salivate, it's really nice. If you want to see more from me, please subscribe, hit the bell button, and a few thumbs up would be absolutely excellent. And in the meantime, take care, see you later. Ciao.